Yeah, just give me an aisle for you guys ready? Yeah. Raise your hand if you have a cell phone. Keep your hand raised if you also own a car. Keep your hand raised. I'll even do it because I know my armpits are probably stinkier than yours are. <laughs> Keep your, okay, now here's the question. If it is all possible that within the last seven days you've driven by a for sale sign for a house or condominium or some other piece of real estate, if it's at all possible, then the last seven days, keep them up. <laughs> then it's at all possible you've driven by a for sale sign, keep your hand raised. Only keep your hand raised if you actually picked up the phone and called the realtor. Okay, there's one, two, three people in the room. 100% participation. Three people in the room out of 90, we have 90 seats in this room, three people in the room call the person. That's because you're not seeing that as an opportunity. See, I've trained my eyes to look at things and go, is that an opportunity? Is there an opportunity there? So here's, I'm going to give you a real life example of, of a day in my life. I'm leaving my house. You guys ever leave your house? Yes. So I'm leaving my house and there's a for sale sign that I'm driving by because i got to go to the grocery store. I've been out of the house for a little while. I just got back from this awesome seminar. And I know that the, you know, the grocery, there's no groceries, no fresh vegetables, and I gotta pick up my checks in the mailbox. <laughs> the mailbox, man, I gotta go to the post office. So I'm driving around, and I'm leaving, and I, and I see this for sale sign. And I have eyeballs. How many of you have eyeballs? <laughs> yeah, and I look at the for sale sign. I don't just drive around and buy it. It doesn't matter whether I'm shopping for house or not, because I train my eyes and go, bang, that's an opportunity right there. And I look at that opportunity, and I go, oh my goodness, I slow down. You have brakes? When your car gets up brakes? I slow down, and I have a yellow pad. Who has a legal pad? Give me a legal yellow pad here. That's white. It's okay, yellow and white. There's a, now I invented this, and you guys can thank me. Remember those bench seats where you used to keep your chick right next to you? <laughs> well, I actually changed that for all of us. Sorry, guys. I actually called the car company and said, you know what, make a center console so I can put my yellow pad right between the center console and the seat. And if you realize this, if you actually do this, a yellow pad or a legal pad, like, it doesn't matter, yellow, white, green, as long as you can write on it, fits perfectly between the center console and the seat. And I keep a legal pad and a pen in there at all times. If you're going to my car right now, it's in there. And what do I do? I slow down. Again, we can use the brakes. I'm not taking four hours out of my day. I slow down. I pull it out. I write the realtor's name and phone number. Her name is Jen. This is how the call goes. Hi, Jen. Yeah, this is Jen. Hey, Jen. This is a hot dog pony in Seattle, Washington. I'm doing good. What can I do for you? Jen, I'm giving you a call. I just drove by your listing here in Beaver Lake Estate. She's like, great. Are you interested in the house? I say, well, it's a beautiful home. I say, actually, I already live in the neighborhood, and I know you're very actively involved in this, in the real estate community here on the Spanish Plateau. I'm an entrepreneur. I love working with super sharp people. I've got a very simple question for you, Jan, and that is, do you at all keep your options open in terms of making any money outside of what you're currently doing as a real estate professional? She says, yes, I do. Yeah. I said, awesome. That's great. And what do I do at that point? And get her information about my network marketing opportunity. However you do it, DVD, CD, website, I don't care what it is, you guys are all different network marketing companies, I open the door and I'm able to give her information about the Are we looking for an open door? And then to provide information to slip something through that door. So at that point, I'm finishing now. I, I'm continuing to, I'm driving. Now I'm all of a sudden, the, I'm in the parking lot in Pine Lake Estates, in, the, in my Pine Lake Shopping Center, where I go get my mail. I walk in and get my mail. And I go in there, I have a key for my mailbox, and I can use the key. I pull out the mail. Fortunately, I got an MLM check, so that's pretty sweet. And, I'm, and there's a court court right here. Right there is a court court. You guys have seen the court court, right? And on the court court, there's what? For sell signs. There's business cards. And I'm like this. And I'm personal business trainer, realtor, mortgage people. Go, go, go. I pull out the business cards. Why are they up there? Because they're looking for other business. Put them in my, put them in my pocket. He is, yeah, he's the end. Yeah. <laughs> I put them in my pocket. <laughs> and at that point, I have to go to the grocery store, which happens to be about 50 yards over here, so I go to the grocery store. And I get my grocery cart. And I have my grocery cart. And there's this dude, uh, there's a little mini guy on my grocery cart. And his face is right there. He's got this big, bright, beaming smile, beautiful teeth. He's obviously had braces. <laughs> his name is Greg. And Greg's a state farm insurance. And there's Greg's phone number. And I'm like, I have a cell phone in my pocket. Different cell phone. Stacy, say hi to 90 people. Everybody say hi. Hi! I'm actually training in front of 90 people. I'll call you later. I love you. Yeah, just because I have to pick up my phone. Bye. That's my sister. <laughs>
I love it working with super sharp people. I've got a very simple question for you, Greg, and that is, do you at all keep your options open in terms of making any money outside of what you're currently doing as a state farmer? And he said, I do. I said, Greg, I see your office is right around the corner from my house. Is it possible that we get together on Monday or Tuesday of next week? He said, Tuesday. I said, 9 or 11, which one's better for you? He's like, 9. I said, great, I'll see you at 9 o'clock. I showed up at 9 o'clock. I didn't show up at 9.30. I didn't show up at 8.20 either. I was there at like five minutes to nine. For those of you that are like, I can't ever show up on time, I'm always late. This is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always late. I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> I showed up at nine o'clock. I signed the guy up on the spot. Now it's Nia, it was Nia, 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 it was Nia, Nia, it was Nia, it was Nia, it was Nia. Okay, now I'm back in reverse. I haven't actually done the meeting yet, okay? So now I'm actually finishing my grocery shopping after I set up the meeting. Did you guys follow that? Yes. All is dead. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, that's the Beatles. So I know. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> so I'm going home. Now all I did is I left my house to go where? To the post office and the grocery store to run there and tell me to leave your house. So I called the realtor Jan. I called Greg. I got four cards in my pocket. I pull the cards out, and I'm driving, and because I know it's illegal, I have Bluetooth now. <laughs> so now I'm Bluetoothing. And there's Bob, the personal fitness trainer. I say, hey, Bob, this is Bob again. This is Bob. Bob, this is Todd Falcone here in Sammamish. How are you doing? He said, good. What can I do for you? Bob, I just pulled your business card off of the court court at the Starbucks and finally, you know, the finally shop. I said, great. I said, Bob, obviously if you're putting that card up there, you're obviously looking for your business. I got an entrepreneur, I love working with super sharp people. I've got a very simple question for you, and that is, do you all keep your options open in terms of making any money outside of what you're currently doing as a personal fitness trainer? What do you say? Yes. yes. Is that hard? No. no. Is that easy? Yes. yes. Really? Yes. No. It wasn't a trick question, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, you are hilarious. But however, if that's you just being 
you, and if you're really that intoxicated and you actually left that, then don't bother, he never called me. <laughs> but see, here's the deal. When you go down the social economic chain, Broke people have no center of influence. They, they see the glasses half empty, they're skeptical, they have little money. When you go up to somebody, if you go up there and talk to a realtor, a 42-year-old mortgage broker, real estate agent, they don't hang out with 16-year-old pimple-faced kids. My first job was flipping burgers and frying tacos and jack-in-the-box. I wasn't even good enough to flip burgers. I had to start being the frying tacos deal. Anybody else do fast food? Remember this one? Cheese on 12. Cheese 6 on 12, son. Fix those pants and those polyester pants and paper caps so I have to do this. And... Right? <laughs> successful people hang out with other successful people. Okay? They don't hang out with other broke people. So when you go up the socioeconomic chain, if you guys start tar targeting talent, don't, don't buy into this whole thing. Like, when I started network marketing, I was like, okay, and this is two legitimate questions. You started network marketing, it's like, okay, who do I, I get it? How many of you got it the first time you started network marketing? I get this, make sense? Yeah. Okay, next question is who do I talk to and what do I say, right? Yeah. And you're like, okay, write down everybody you've known since kindergarten. <laughs> hey, write down the more market list, right? Isn't it a little bit creepy? I've called my buddy out and seen him since second grade. This is Johnson's class. Hey, J Johnny, Johnny Johnson. Hey, Johnny, talk about going to hang out. Remember, we went to second grade together. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I don't remember. But listen, I've done this phenomenal this is our Johnson, what about you? <laughs> That's creepy. That's creepy. I'm not even going after everybody I've known since kindergarten. It's creepy. Who do I talk to? What do I say? Take a mirror out of the marketplace, shove it up underneath their nose pocket. If it fogs up, they're a prospect. Give me a break. You guys should start talent scouting. Going after people that are like, that do, and here's, here's, here's the method, okay? Here's the bottom line of the method. I teach you with this method of recruiting professionals how to go up the socioeconomic chain, going after people that are more likely to be successful in network marketing because of what they do already, and also be able to identify those people when you're generating leads on your own. Just because some smart responds to your advertisement, does that mean you ever spent 25 minutes with them? No. no. You respond to my ads, so I guess you ever spent 20. Last time I did that, I was on the phone with Granny Johnson. She was about 111 years of age. She was just probably like 90. And I knew it. I knew she was the wrong prospect. Have you ever had the wrong prospect? Yeah. Wrong prospect. I knew within like 30 seconds, I'm like, this is not the woman I want in my business. 90 minutes later, I'm still on the phone with her. And I get off and I get a freaking great recipe for chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wrote it down and I still make cookies and get that recipe. It's a great from scratch recipe. It's not one of those take them out of the freezer, break them apart deal. Questions later. Questions. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for quality people. People that do what we do already. So I, so I have a method, this method that, that, that going after realtors, insurance agents, financial planners, mortgage brokers, professional salespeople that already do what we do. They already get paid the way that we get paid. They're already experiencing life the way we experience it. They're just doing it someplace else. So years ago, when I got sick and tired of dealing with broke, grumpy complainers, people that didn't have the money, didn't have the center of influence, I started to target and go after a different group of people. And you guys now at least have your eyeballs open, unfortunately, because of the limitations of time that I have. Unless, I mean, if you want to stay in this room, we can have 500 people in this same room later. You guys can all stay here and we can just keep on going. You guys ready? <laughs> How many people will act differently as a result of what I just shared with you? Okay. So all, all I can really do in this breakout session is open up your eyeballs, and then because you have now awareness, you're, you have now a choice, right? You can either choose to do what you were doing, and you know, you'll drop by the for sale sign, and you'll be like, damn. Are you really going to slow down, and you'll have a yellow pad in your car, or you won't? That's your choice. I don't care what you do. It's not my check. It's yours. <laughs>